Hey, what's up? I'm interested in black books and I'm here to do another book review. This time the book is going to be on Red Pill by Hari Kunzru. I'm super excited to show you this book, talk about this book. And no, this is not by a black author, neither was Like a Bird. Yes, interested in black books will focus on black authors, but you caught me at a time where I'm reading non-black authors. So, But if it makes you feel better, the book that I'm currently reading is Grown by Tiffany Jackson, and this will most likely be my next review. But I'm super interested to talk about this book because I think this book is the most artistically and substantively interesting book I've read this year. So this book follows a unnamed narrator who has... Um, really lost it at how bad the world is. He sees the world as being impossibly bleak and in combination with that he's also going through a midlife crisis. So in his mind you know there's not much opportunity for him anymore now that he's getting older plus the world is so bad that he feels panic at his ability to protect his daughter and his wife. So the narrator is an academic and an author. He got his doctorate from Columbia and works as an adjunct professor in the creative writing department of his university. He also wrote a couple books on art. He didn't quite write the book he wanted to and that's basically what he does. He lives in New York with his wife who is an immigration attorney and he has a three-year-old daughter. So this, you know, seems great. Um, the narrator doesn't seem like someone who should have it necessarily bad and he realizes this but he really does view the world as getting really bad and really bleak and the future is doomsday basically he's a doomer climate change the syrian refugee crisis um war these things are really affecting him in a way that it's not affecting other people around him and so he has to go and his wife agrees he has to go and just like get better so he goes on a three month writing residency in Berlin, Germany, in the suburb of Berlin, Germany. And his wife was like, go, but please come back to me happy. That's what I ask. Side note, uh, he shouldn't have gone to Germany <laughs> because Germany's past, um, Germany's nationalist, socialist, Nazi past, but also the random uh, German authors and philosophers that fell into suicide or murder or both, um, really gets to him. The residency is at this center that preaches openness and transparency. And all the writers at the center are required to work at in an open space office. So no one has their own like office, but instead you're working all together in this room in a cubicle. And the narrator hates this. He hates surveillance. He talks about how when people are watching you or performing, he, he really hates this and he refuses to work there. The other thing that the center requires is that you go to the various activities and that you eat meals at least most of the time in the common space dining area. The narrator also hates this and hates some of the personalities that are also doing their residency program too. So the narrator is just not vibing with the center. He should have never went, but he didn't read the contract he signed. And plus he doesn't really know where else to go. So he stays and continues to break the rules. So he'll like go out to meals outside of the center. He won't work in the workspace, but instead he'll work in his room. And he still feels like he's being watched, but you know, he's finding ways to resist. But the center is adamant and they are literally tracking the hours that the writers work in the common space area. So they, you know, show him his numbers and they're like, if you don't bring your numbers up, you can leave, literally. And so the narrator is just not, not doing well. The other thing is that the narrator gets hooked on this show while he's holed up in his room called Blue Lives. So I, one, I don't think it's an accident that this book is called Red Pill. And I don't think it's an act accident that the cop show is called Blue Lives. And in this show, Blue Lives, it's very, very violent. I noticed that in the book, both of the perpetrators in the two like, like different storylines they showed of Blue Lives, the perpetrators are black, the cops are white. Okay, so there's like double meaning there. And the narrator's hooked on the show. Something about the show is like really confirming everything he thinks about the world, that it's violent, it's it's not a safe place, nothing is good anymore, and he gets really, really 
like entrenched. So then he goes to this party in Berlin and he actually meets the creator of the Blue Live show who, surprise, is a white supremacist and takes him out to dinner. The white supremacist takes out the narrator to dinner and explains his thoughts in this Lebanese restaurant. And he's like, doesn't even look like Germany, right? Well, that's because diversity is bad. That's essentially what the creator of the show tells the narrator. This shakes the narrator and his belief system and he ends up calling his wife and has a panic attack and is like, why do we believe in human rights? Why do we believe in, you know, extending a helping hand to people? Like, wh why? And I just felt like, damn, dude, like it takes one conversation with a white supremacist to shake you off. But again, the narrator is vulnerable and he's going through a crisis and he's being, you know, inundated with all these like news stories that make him feel hopeless. So of course, this is just another thing that shakes him. The creator of the show is basically like, you know, you will always think of me, you know, I'm right. You just, you know, want to hold on to your liberal, you know, help everyone stance because, you know, you're scared, but this is how the world is and they go their own ways. Um, but the narrator is obsessed with this creator and has to find him, has to find him again, has to confront him. It's unclear if the narrator believes what the creator is saying of the show or if he wants to just confront and argue with him. In his course to find the creator again, the narrator basically um, gets kicked out of the center, the writing center, travels to Paris, misses his flight to New York back home, and eventually gets um, checked into an institution, a mental health institution. This book, I think, was trying to say a lot of things, a lot, a lot of things. And uh, where should I start? First of all, I don't think that cop shows are innocuous. I don't think they're innocent things that people watch. I do think that to some extent, they help in making the populace afraid of their fellow human, okay? And especially black humans, because a lot of the times the criminals that are shown are people of color, the cops that are shown are white. So I really appreciated this book for really putting that into the character's storyline and illustrating that so clearly. The other thing is that constantly watching the news is important, but it's not something that just goes out one year comes the other it does affect our mental state and the fact that the narrator finds himself crying and emotionally disturbed at seeing yes you know the Syrian refugee crisis of 2014 and 2015 climate change both impending and current climate change um, money worrying about security and wars that makes sense that it's not even though the narrator's treated as though he's crazy I don't feel like he was crazy for feeling emotionally distraught I just felt like he could have better handled it, especially as someone who has a daughter and who has a wife and didn't really need to run out on them to deal with his emotions. I also thought that the discussions of surveillance and how we perform under uh, surveillance and how that makes us panicky and how we don't know where surveillance begins and where surveillance ends, as, especially as technology kind of grows in its use, um, was very interesting uh, in this book as well. In the end, it's hard to tell whether the narrator was completely wrong for being scared and worried about the world because when he comes back from the mental institution, you know, and his wife is like, it's fine, it's fine, they uh, have an election party, a 2016 election party, and his wife and his other liberal friends are so sure that the world is good, nothing's really that bad, and that Hillary Clinton is going to win, only to find that Donald Trump ends up winning the presidency. And it's a little victory for the narrator because he's kind of right. The world has changed. People are getting more extreme. Uh, violence is quickly becoming the answer in most people's minds. So is the narrator completely wrong? No. But is he completely right? No. I think there is good and bad. And the narrator let himself get too swept up by the bad to the point where... Yeah, he uh, is chasing white supremacists down, trying to argue with them in Paris. Definitely place this book in my top 10 for how interesting it is and the lessons that I learned. And I think people can learn about how, you know, politics affects our mental health. And 
that is something like you need to keep in mind like you do not want to fall into the current events too much that you lose yourself so yeah red pill by Hari Kunzru. next book i will probably review as i said is grown by tiffany d jackson let me know if you've read this book what you, what you thought and um yeah thank you for watching